Hello everybody, this is Gamergar and welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For the purposes of today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make tons of crystallariums and how you can acquire crystallariums so that you can fill up a shed like this with hundreds of crystallariums. The reason why you want a shed filled up with crystallariums is because it trivializes most of the endgame content the game has to offer. Let's take a look at the mats needed to make a crystallarium. 99 stone, 5 gold bars, 2 iridium bars and 1 battery pack. I'm going to show you the best ways to get each of those resources in this video. For stone for example, you'll never have to go into the mines again to farm stone. This method for stone is going to change the way you harvest the stone forever. All you need is jades, go to the desert on a Sunday and purchase staircases from the desert trader. The reason why you want to purchase as many staircases as possible is because we are going to convert these lovely staircases into stone using a deconstructor. Now you can get your hands on a deconstructor from Key's Secret Walnut Room. I believe they only cost 20 key gems apiece. One deconstructor will convert the staircase into 99 stone and don't even take that long to do. As you can see here, I've got a setup here in the desert where I've got lots of deconstructors and these will break down the staircases for me into stone. Utilizing this method, you can amass thousands of stone in the space of a few in-game hours in Stardew Valley. The days of going into the mines and hitting open rocks for you is over. Look at all the stone I got there by just putting in a few staircases. Next up, you can bypass the crafting method and you can hunt the treasure floors in Skull Cavern for, for crystallariums. Now, they are few and in between because the loot pool for treasure chests is absolutely huge, but if you go into the Skull Cavern with max luck, it increases the odds of you finding a treasure room, thus increasing the odds of you finding a crystallarium. Next up, let's talk about the iridium ore and the gold ore requirements to make crystallariums. The best ways by far to get your hands on these ores is to go into the Skull Cavern, get down as far as you can and start blowing the ores open with bombs or use a slingshot if you prefer. The trick to Skull Cavern is to get down to floor 50 as quickly as possible. If you can get to floor 50, my advice is to then start farming the floors for the ores because the iridium ores start to appear a lot more after floor 50. If you can make it down to floor 100 very quickly, do that instead. So the trick is to use your warp totem, get into the Skull Cavern and just ignore everything and just literally spam through the floors. If you can get 50 comfortably, farm after 50. If you feel like you can make it to 100 comfortably and still got a good few hours left in the day, get down to floor 100 and then start farming. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It'll help me out a bunch and I'd really appreciate it. I release Stardew Valley content every Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. So just click on that subscribe button if you like watching Stardew Valley content because you'll absolutely love this channel if you uh, if you like watching Stardew Valley content. As you can see here now, the bombs are, are really handy. I just use them to blow everything up. Let's see what I got for my Skull Cavern run today. I got 182 gold. I got... 442 iridium ores. I even got a crystallarium. I even got an auto petter actually, which is pretty rare. And I got a few other goodies as well, like a prismatic shard, some cactus seeds, a couple of totems, iridium sprinklers. This is why you want crystallariums because you can get all those items no problem. It trivializes the skull cavern when you go in there with, with staircases because you can just spam the levels. So, what I'm going to do now is I have a setup built here in the desert where I've got my deconstructors and I've got my smelters and it's all here in the desert area and I'm, I literally just smelt all my bars here so I make iron bars I make gold bars and I make iridium bars the reason why I make iron bars is because I'm going to use a transmutation skill to get to, to convert the iron bars into gold bars I'm also going to pick, pet the camel there because he's a very lonely camel <laughs> As you can see here now, from doing a Skull Cavern run, you're going to come out with all manner of ores, not just iridium ores and gold ores, you're always going to be picking up iron ores, copper ores. There's a great skill in the game, it's called Transmute, and you can basically transmute bars into greater quality bars. As you can see here now, I've got some iron bars, and we're going to convert those into gold bars using the, um, the Transmute AU. So it basically converts two iron bars into one gold bar, and it's an absolutely magnificent way 
to stock up on gold bars if you're looking to make some more of the end game items the game has to offer, especially if you don't really have a need anymore for iron bars. So what we're going to do now is we're going to smelt all our iridium ores into iridium bars. And as you can see from the Skull Cavern run I did today, I got hundreds of iridium ores. It's so common in the Skull Cavern, especially when you get past floor 100. You're almost guaranteed to come across a few nodes in every level that you get into. You can also sell these bars if you want to make tons of cash, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to use them to make crystallariums. And we're going to make tons of crystallariums after this. Next up, let's talk about a quest here called Island Ingredients. So, Caroline wants 100 taro roots. In order to get taro roots, we have to get our hands on taro tubers. We can get taro tubers from the, uh, the Ginger Island Trader, and we need bone fragments to purchase the taro roots off him. Or the taro tubers off him. I always get mixed up between a taro tuber and a taro root. Best way to get bone fragments is to go to the dig site in Ginger Island and just hit open the uh, the bone the bone veins. Another way to get the bone fragments is to just take a monster musk, go down to floor 75 here and just farm this floor for the, for the skeletons. Um, they drop bone fragments quite a lot. It's a great way to stock up on bone fragments. Another way to bypass the whole bone fragments and to get the tarot tubers directly is to kill slimes inside the volcano cave. They occasionally drop the tarot tubers, especially if you have the burglar's ring. It'll increase the drop rate for you. So I got lots of bone shards here. Now I'm just going to purchase the tarot tubers. Now, the thing about the tarot tuber is it takes 10 days to grow. But if you plant it near water, it only takes 7 days. And if you use uh, speed grow, it only takes 4 days if you use the deluxe speed grow. So you're getting it from 10 days down to 4 days if you utilize those methods. The reason why I'm doing this quest is because I want to learn a recipe called the solar panel and that generates batteries every couple of days. But the days have to be sunny days for it to work. So I can now harvest these lovely taro tubers and I can get the taro roots and you got to use a scythe here to get them. So this is the best way to go about farming taro roots. Now, sometimes Caroline might ask for pineapples, or sometimes she might even ask for um, ginger. Um, so the method is similar, you know, go to Ginger Island, and, you know, you can go into the, into the volcano cave and you can slay enemies for pineapple seeds, and you can always use seed makers if you wanted to, to speed up the process for, you know, to, for the pineapples. So, you get a nice profit there for the taro tubers, or the taro roots. <laughs> I'm just going to call them the Taros from now on. The Taros! And I learned the solar panel recipe here from Caroline. Thank you very much, Caroline. Now, you don't need the solar panel. If you don't have the 1.5 update, you can just use the regular, um, you know, the regular lightning rods. But the solar panels are more reliant because they automatically generate the batteries for you. And all you need is refined quartz, iron bars and gold bars to make them. As the best place to put down the solar panels is the desert because you never get rainy days in the desert. It's always sunny in the desert. That means you're always going to get battery packs every couple of days. So we now have our stone, we have our battery packs, we have our gold bars and we have our iridium bars. Let's go make tons of crystallariums. And as you can see, we can make... Look at all the crystallariums just made there. 74. How long did that take me to make? I'd say about two days. Two days of farming Skull Cavern and the solar panels just did the rest. That's all it took. And I can now fill up a shade. Crystallariums, no problem at all. Crystallariums aren't just good for generating jades. You could put diamonds in them and you could sell them or gift them to people. You could also trade them in for triple shot espressos at a desert shader. You could put rubies into them, which you can trade in for spicy eels. You know, you could put loads of different things in them that have, that have different uses. You can also put other minerals into them that you get from breaking open those geodes as well. If you want to just, you know, sell those items and make a profit. So crystallariums are the way to go. So I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed it. I will upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next day or two. So stay tuned for that. To all my current subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. And thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great day, everyone. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. 
don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future videos. And as always, have a great day.